In this video, I'm going to show you a concept that absolutely blew my mind when I saw it for the first time. It's called the diamond box method of factoring, and we use it to factor expressions that are a little bit harder, that have an A value of more than one, and you can't factor that A value out, so it's a little harder. So we can use the diamond box method. Another method that's often used is trial and error, but there are other ways to do it. I love this one the most, so I'll share it with you today. Okay, so the first step in the diamond box method is to draw a big X, otherwise known as our diamond. So, in our diamond, at the top, you are going to put the B value. At the bottom, you'll put the A times C value. So what do I mean by the B value? Well, in this expression, we have 2x squared minus 1x, I know it was <clears throat> minus 1x, sorry, I know it wasn't written there before, but now it is, um, minus 6. So that's in our invisible B value. So at the top of our diamond, we can put that B value, which is 1, and at the bottom, we're going to put A times C, so that's 2 times negative 6, and that will give us a negative 12. Now at the sides of our diamond, we're going to look for two numbers that multiply to get the bottom and add to get the top. So two numbers that multiply in this case to get negative 12 and add to get 1. So off to the side you can do a little bit of scrap work and look for two numbers that add, multiply to get negative 12. 1 and 12, some version of that, but there's no way to get 1 from 1 and 12 if you add them up, so that's gone. 2 and 6, again, no way to get 1, so that's gone. 3 and 4. I think we're on to something here, because if or 4 is negative, that will not only multiply to get negative 12, which was what we want, but it will also add to get positive 1, actually negative 1. So it will also add to get negative 1. So those are the numbers we're looking for in the sides of our diamond, 3 and negative 4. And that's step 1. Step 2 is our box. Our box is divided into four parts. At the top right side, top left side of our box, we're going to put our A value. Bottom right, we're going to put our C value. So in our box, A, the 2 will go at the top left, and C, negative 6, will go at the bottom. The values we obtained at the side of our diamond will go into the other spaces, and it doesn't matter which one goes where. So I could put 3 here and negative 4 here, or vice versa. Doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have step 2 complete, our box. Step 3 is using that box to figure out the actual answer. How do we factor this? Now, in order to factor this, we first look at the first row in our box. So we look at the row. In this case, it has a 2 and it has a 3. What is the greatest common factor of 2 and 3? In this case, our greatest common factor is 1. And we will put it right here on the side of our box. Now we can take 1 and we can see how many times 1 will go into the first box. How many times does 1 go into 2? And that would be two times. Now, how many times does 1 go into 3? And that happens three times. Finally, we need a number here. And the number that we need to put there is the number that multiplies by 2, that 2, to get negative 4. And that number would be negative 2. So negative 2. So now if you check it out, everywhere in our box, any all four spaces in our box has two numbers surrounding it that will multiply to get it. So for example, to get that 3, 
we now have 3 and 1. That multiplies to get that 3. Or to get this negative 6, we now have 3 and negative 2, which would give us that negative 6. So those values around our box will tell us our answer. So we have x here and x here. And in order to use this to get our answer, we have 2x plus 3. So I just rewrote what's written at the top of our box. 2x plus 3. And on the left side of our box, we have 1x minus 2. And that is our answer. Now you may be saying, well, well, that was nice that you knew how to do that and that you remembered all those steps, but why would I ever do that when I could do trial and error? True. However, you may be motivated to learn the diamond box method if you have to factor very, very difficult, annoying, humongous, challenging expressions. Case and point. We have an expression here. A lot is going on with this expression. Um, we have 45 over here. That means you could have different factors of 45, such as 9 and 5 and 45 and 1, and then the signs could be different. You don't know which one's positive, which one's negative. Same with 8. It has several factors. You can have 1 and 8. You could have 2 and 4. Um, so a lot is going on here. And it would take a lot of iterations to do trial and error. You'd have a lot of stuff to try unless you're really good at it or you're really lucky. This way, Diamond Box, you get the right answer the first time you try. You just have to remember all the steps. So let's go through the steps once more. First, we have OR Diamond. In OR Diamond, again, A here, sorry, not A, B here and AC here. So for B, our B value is 2, so we get that there. And our A times C value is 8 times negative 45, which would give us negative 360. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get our bottom and add to get the top. So two numbers that multiply to get negative 360 and add to get 2. So off to the side with your scrap work, you can start by 1 and 360. If you do it this way, it's going to take a, a little bit of time to get there because our two numbers should be really, really close. Because when you add them up, you want something tiny, you want to get 2. So on and on and on you try. Um, until you get to the point where you realize that the two numbers that you're looking for are 18 and 20. And the one is positive, one is negative. It should be to get a positive 2, you'd want negative 18 and positive 20. So in our diamond at the side, we have negative 18 and positive 20. In our box, Again, we have four spaces. The top should have A, the bottom should have C. So that's 8 and negative 45. And our two numbers that go in the top right and bottom left are the numbers from our diamond. So negative 18 and positive 20. Now we can fill in the sides or fill out the sides of our box. The greatest common factor of our top row is 2. So we can now put 2 on the outside. 2 into 8, we get 4. And 2 into 18, we get negative 9. 4 into 20, 4 into 20 gives us 5. And now we're ready for our answer. Our answer is 4x minus 9, parenthesis there, times 2x plus 5. And if you're not sure and you want to just check that you're right, of course you can do 
first outer inner last to check and just to make sure just to convince you here let's do that together so first we have 4x times 2x gives us 8x squared outer 4x times 5x sorry 4x times 5 gives us 20x inner 9 times 2x gives you negative 18x and last negative 9 times 5 gives you negative 45 and like magic we have 8x squared plus 2x minus 45 that's exactly what we wanted so we know the diamond box method works